To understand choosing appropriate resilient storage for your architectures, it's important to understand the process that needs to be followed. First, you should define your strategy to ensure the durability of data. Next, identify how data service consistency will affect operations. Then it's time to select data services that meet the access and other requirements of the application. Last, to know how to implement across a variety of architectures, you should be able to identify services that can be used with hybrid or non-cloud native applications. Starting with the strategy for data durability, you need to understand how the various storage services handle durability and what scenarios each of the different services are suited towards. When is it better to use Amazon Elastic Block Store over Amazon EC2 Instance Store? In what circumstances is ephemeral storage ideal? Can Amazon Simple Storage Service and Amazon S3 Glacier be used interchangeably? Understanding the data durability management of each service and understanding the strategy and requirements for your architectures will be important to finding the correct solutions. Moving on, how will data consistency come into play with your operations? It's important that you understand not only how data consistency is handled by the services, but how calls to the service can be impacted. With replication for durability, the calls made and the ways those calls are made can impact the type of data you retrieve. Also look into the ways you can work with the various consistency scenarios. Look at puts of new data as well as changes to existing data and methods to best access the most recent data. After that comes the selection of data services that will meet the requirements. This area will be where it is incredibly important to understand the functionality of the services, as well as how the access pattern requirements will be impacted by that functionality. Do you have a read heavy workload or do you need fast read and write capabilities? Does data need to be accessible by a global user base or is it limited to a single IP range? Are you working with a lot of small files or do you need to move larger objects? Your access and other requirements will go a long way in determining which services you might use. The last area I want to bring up was that you should be able to identify storage services that can be used with hybrid or non-cloud native applications. There are a number of needs that you might be asked to meet, and there's often overlap in the services that can meet those needs. When looking at migrating data, when would you prefer one of the AWS Snow family of services over another? What services can you use when you need consistent and regular data transfer between on-premises and AWS environments? In what scenarios will the various AWS storage gateway solutions be preferred, and what methods do you have for implementing them? While it would be nice to look at architectures that only exist in AWS, that is not the reality for many AWS customers. Just as it's important to understand the needs and select the best storage services for cloud native environments, it's also important to do the same for all other types of infrastructures. Understand the functionality of the services, see how they fit various use cases, and don't forget that the needs of hybrid environments should also be understood. Until next time.